Hello guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'll be teaching you how to make an end screen in Photoshop. So I've already made a video on how to add end screens and basically an end screen is an outro. So today I'll be trying to make the tutorial very easy um, so even beginners can follow along. In case you're a beginner or you just don't know how to make an end screen and you can't follow along with me, I'll actually be releasing a template in the description once we hit 500 likes. So if you want it, hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you're a small YouTuber or just a YouTuber in general and you want to grow your YouTube channel, I started two communities. They're in the description. I made a Facebook group where you can talk and discuss and stuff like that and collaborate. I also made a Discord channel where you can actually uh, voice chat with people and you can like ask them to collaborate. You can talk and discuss about topics and stuff like that. I'll leave both of those links in the description. Currently, they're around both 50 members each. And if we can, you know, increase that and start a larger community, that would be great. With that being said, let's just get into the video. I forgot to mention that I have a channel revamp giveaway going on on Twitter right now. All you have to do is go in the link in the description, click on the tweet, retweet the tweet, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to me on YouTube to enter. The first thing you want to do is press File New, and then type in 920 by 1080. And make sure the background contents are transparent. Once you're done that, you want to find a background for yourself. You want to determine your content type. Mine is tutorial, so I can't really find something that's um, like gaming. Like, you know, gaming, you can just search up gaming, but I can't really search up tutorials as a background. So instead, I found this background right here. And I search up abstract for this. So in case you have a channel like mine and you don't know what to search up, you can search up abstract. So I'm just going to place this image right here and then just place it. So hold shift and drag to keep the aspect ratio. If you don't hold shift, it will be all stretched and it doesn't look good like that. The next thing you want to do is press file place and place this template from the description. And the reason you want this is because it determines what the safe area is. So the black area is a safe area because like th these boxes cannot go further down and into the black area. Everything that you want should not be in the gray area because if you were to add text in the middle right there, it would be blocked by these boxes and that's not a smart thing to do. But in my case, I'm going to add these boxes to the sides so you can't really block the text. And I'm going to add the logo beneath the text. So right now, I'm just going to make the guidelines more visible. One way you can do this is by pressing Control R and then just dragging these down. So these are the grid lines and they're really helpful because they don't disappear unless you move them. And so if you press delete right here, it still appears and you know the grid lines. And even if you save it, these won't appear in the save file. So now I'm just going to add my text. So I'm going to determine what color text It's going to be white because I have a dark background. If you have a dark background, make it white. If you have a dark back, if you have a light background, make it dark. Now I'm just going to type it Steven Van. And one thing you want to make sure is that the line spacing is good and it's like close to each other because usually I see text like this and it doesn't really look cool. Um, so to fix this, you want to highlight the text, press control T and center in the middle right here. And also make sure that the line spacing is around 100. So this area right here, it depends on the text. Some text, you know, have bigger gaps between each other. But in this case for next of old, um, it's, you know, closer to each other. To align the text, you want to press control A and then press this fifth option up here. And you can also center in the middle, but I'm not going to do that because there's going to be a logo underneath and that'd be too low down. You can also press control A and then select the move tool and layer align layers to selection and then select vertical centers and horizontal centers if you want to do it that way. Also make sure to press control D to deselect after you do that. So the next thing I would do is add more text. So like thanks for watching and stuff like that, but it takes too long. So let me actually do that right now. Actually, it won't take that long and add social media. Social media would take a lot longer, but now I'm just going to add lighting. Lighting is really important because it kind of makes the image pop so you can either use color correction like packs and stuff i'm not going to do that i'm just going to show you guys the most simple way i do it you want to press new layer press the brush make sure the brush is set at zero hardness and the size is around a thousand and for the first step you just want to make sure the brush is one fourth on the canvas and three fourths off the canvas so you want to press right there now you want to press Control t to resize that and just stretch it and so like something like that. And then move it down a little bit. And now you have some light. So it looks a lot cooler like that. And you can also add like blue as well. So you can do the same effect with a different color. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, white. So let me just make it maybe like that. 
So there, I can do the same thing there. If it's too bright, you can lower the opacity, but right here it looks, you know, pretty decent. You can also add a vintage. Sometimes I add both of them at the same time. So in this case, like right here, there's that light and there's that vintage. But usually it looks better if it's just, you know, separate from each other. So if you wanted a vintage, you would do the same thing with black instead and you would do it on the corners. So something like that. Let me lower it a bit. So you can, you know, show it like this or do it like that. It's really up to you or you can do both. But one thing that gets in the way is the text. So you can kind of move the text like over here. But then you will see that it's kind of blue there. So instead I can lower the opacity right there. See like something like that so the text is visible the next thing i could do is add like a white strip i got this from tempers because it looks really clean on his so i thought i'd add it on mine as well so what he did is he added the fill or the stroke as white it doesn't matter which one it is it could be both and you just want to drag it as like this short strip right here and you just want to move it up against that guideline and there now you have like this i guess border i don't know it looks cool like that for his, he added like a color down here. So, so what he basically did is this. So let's just delete this rectangle. What he did was add the fill as a color. So maybe blue or something. And then he just dragged it up with the white stroke. So it looks something like this. But I'm not going to add like that because I just don't, I'm not feeling the blue. It's just too blue for me. So I just add that one strip right there. I might, however, make the background a little bit darker because the white is kind of fading in with the background. and I don't want that. So. Let's just press hue and saturation and turn down the darkness a bit. So there, it's kind of more visible for the text as well. You can obviously add like different wallpapers. So if you find a similar one to it, or maybe like a texture, you can easily add it. So let's just add a grunge. You can add a grunge and grunges look cool. So I'll maybe view image here and just save it. Actually, this one looks a lot better. So let's just save that and then press file place. And now you can move it on the top just underneath the text and press layer here or linear dodge. You can also add soft light. I usually do linear dodge. It depends on like the brightness and stuff like that because it might affect it and just the feel of the thumbnail or like the wh whatever you're making. So here you might like that. You'll learn more about what each uh, mode does what, but as you can see, add texture to it. So if you remove this, you can see that it actually add texture. It looks better like that in my opinion. And now what I'm going to do is add arrows. So why I'm adding arrows is because there's going to be two uh, video boxes and there's this one arrow I like a lot like this one right here and I'm just going to save this and make sure the image is a PNG. So whether that's a social media icon or an arrow or an object, make sure it's PNG, especially if you're trying to add it as an image um, because you don't want it to have a background. So here I'm just going to move it right there and change the hue and saturation to blue because like I, like I need it blue because it matches the theme here. So let's just make it darker blue. So something like that. And then press control and control and press control E. You want to press control E to merge these layers. So let me just make it underneath here and kind of erase the end of it. So something like that will look cool. And then you want to do the same thing to the other side. So press control J to duplicate, press control T. And now you want to flip it. So flip horizontally and do the same thing to the other side. And I think I'm done. I just have to add the social media now. And so basically the video boxes are gonna be here and here. So to add the social media icons, I'm just gonna add one to make it quick. You wanna search up the social media name and then PNG. Once again, PNG is very important as it has a transparent background content. As you can see, if it has a checkered background, it is transparent. Some PNG files don't have a checkered background and aren't like transparent but it's always good to search up a PNG file rather than just Twitter itself. So I'm just going to place this Twitter right here, hold shift and drag. And now I can add it to the top here and add my own username. So Steven van underscore. You can, you know, lay it out however you want. And I want to group these together. So press control and control and press control G. And now let's align this. And now you can also like go through this, you know, like change the, the, I guess how it looks like using these adjustment layers. So something like that will look cool. I don't know. It's up to you. You can change the background. You can even add like a gaming background. I hate adding gaming backgrounds cause I'm not a gaming channel. 
but let's just add this and it's also blue so it matches us kind of um, we're just gonna save this so you can kind of add a, a wallpaper in the background so it looks like it matches your theme so let's just move it to the bottom here you know it's up to you honestly you can add more you know layers and stuff so it looks cooler but that that's really good in my opinion but one thing I want to see more of is this background so I'm actually gonna delete that layer where it made it darker and instead I'm gonna make the entire thing here darker so move it on top of all the wallpapers and make that darker so something like that would look really cool so now I'm actually gonna import it into um, my video here so I'm just gonna upload a video a random video and let me just go into Sony Vegas and render it and then I'm gonna go back and upload the video for you guys to see so now it's done rendering I'm gonna upload it so let's go to youtube.com slash upload and now it says it's ready so let's just edit and now you just want to go to end screens and annotations it says it's too short it has to be 25 seconds okay let's go back okay so I just re-rendered it and made it longer okay so we're gonna go end screens here and then we're gonna move it and here if you start from this point because it only works for the last 15 seconds I believe you want to press add uh, elements here so you can import one from a previous video or use a template so first of all, you had to choose a template. You had to choose if you have one video or two. I'm gonna do one subscribe and two videos. So let's see if that's possible. So right there, solve my problem right there. And here, I'm just gonna add the thing right here in the middle and it kind of aligns by itself. And we're, gonna, we're just gonna make this a bit smaller. Can you make it smaller? You can make it bigger, but you can't make it smaller, okay? And then we're just gonna choose the video. So double click, select this double click select this we're gonna save it you can preview it I'll preview it on a bigger screen for you guys I don't want to just preview it here so pretend this is your rest of your video and as you can see it looks awesome it's pointing at your videos like as if it's pointing like this is really cool guys so hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully it helped you out if you want the template it will be in the description for you guys and the good thing is if you look at it closely, it looks like it's on a ledge. It looks like it's it, it looks like it's meant to be, you know. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Steven, and I'll see you in the next one.